carrying costs, the silent deal killer of fix and flip profits. One of the last costs that you have to worry about as a fix and flipper are your property carrying costs, which can unfortunately can be pretty hard to predict ahead of time. So I wanna show you some of those and some of the tricks I use to keep more profits in my pocket. Let's get started by just talking about different carrying costs. Why do they call it a carrying cost? It's the cost of holding that property that you're gonna have to pay along the way. The longer you hold it, the more you're gonna have to pay it. The less that you hold it, the less that you're going to have to pay. So first and foremost, and this is probably more of a given, is your loan cost. Interest does not sleep. And so every day that goes by, you know it's costing you money. As a matter of fact, what I like to do is figure out how much it is costing me per day. So I can say every day that goes by, it's costing me $100 or $50 or $200 or whatever that is. When you keep that in your mind, it helps drastically when it comes to time frames, which is going to be one of the things I'm going to talk about in some tips here in just a minute. Next thing, and this is a real deal killer depending upon where you're at, property taxes. Most people underestimate how much property taxes are. Now, luckily they're public, so you can know what they are before you even purchase the property. But when you look at that, you can say, you know what, every day that I carry this property, I'm having to pay a day's worth of taxes. Now, the taxes may be collected annually or semi-annually or quarterly, but you're still accruing that that's going to have to be paid. And the longer you have it, the more you're going to end up paying. This is also something to keep in mind when you're getting offers on properties. If you get an offer on a property, um, depending upon what market you're in, it may make sense to just accept the offer rather than counter because you're going to have these carrying costs along the way, depending upon how far off that offer actually is and market conditions will dictate that as well. Next thing we got to talk about is utilities. What are we talking about utilities? We're talking about natural gas. We're talking about electric. We're talking about water, sewer, and garbage. Those are things that you're going to be paying for. Those are utilities that aren't going to go away. And that goes along with some landscaping. So the grass is going to grow either way. And you're going to have to cut the grass, take care of the grass. If it's uh, the snow time, you're going to have to do some snow removal or potentially pay for some snow removal. Those are things that you're going to be having along the way. The longer you have it, the more of that you will pay. Next thing I want to talk about is hazard insurance. You also, your hazard insurance is going to add up and each day that you have it out, you're paying more. Now, lots of times hazard insurance companies will write a three month, a six month policy, but for unearned premium, lots of times they will give some of that back to you. Now, some policies for vacant homes are fully earned, meaning once you pay it, you can't get anything back, but some of them allow for unearned and that's part of this hazard insurance that you should be aware of. Even if it is a policy where they don't allow you to get any money back, if you go past that six month period or the period that they've had it for, you're gonna have to pay another time, which is then gonna increase your overall costs, which is why I've got on this list of holding costs. Next up is HOA fees or homeowner association fees. Lots of properties are inside of a homeowners association, which in lots of cases means that the homeowners association is responsible for maintaining the roads, maintaining the exteriors, and those types of things. Uh, it's different to be depending upon what the homeowners association is and what those fees are. But every day that goes by, you're having to pay that. And the sooner that property gets sold, the sooner you will stop having to pay those things. Now, you probably didn't think about all of these. Maybe you've thought about a few of them. But the question is, how can you minimize the carrying costs on a rehab. Before you even close on the property, you've got to put a plan together. My recommendations is that you put a scope of work together. And with that scope of work, you then work with contractors to give you pricing and timeframes with that scope of work. We got the scope of work and we get prices. The next thing we do is put timeframes together. How long will it take us to get each one of these things done? Part of that may be permits. Part of that may be um, having to wait for materials. Part of that may be waiting for paint to arrive or ordering it in advance so you don't have to wait for paint to arrive. Arrive, but really getting an understanding of the time frame and what it's really going to cost. I don't like a contractor saying, oh, we'll get it all done in 30 days. I like to say, no, let's break it down in small chunks like we'd eat an elephant in small chunks. And we're going to say, hey, how do we, what's happening week by week? And that's how I like to do it as a week by week guide. So we know what's going to be done by week or what's being worked on each week. It makes it really easy for me to help hold a contractor accountable as to what should have gotten done last week, what should have been worked on last week, and what's supposed to get done this week. It's really helpful if you have that and you break it out. And I recommend you do that before you ever buy the property. So if you have two general contractors bids that are licensed and insured, you know you could work with either one of them. You don't want to have one good and one bad one. You want to have 
two good contractors because if something happens to one of your contractors, you want to be able to plug the other one right in its place and get the work done or these holding costs are going to kill you, the carrying costs. We get our scope of work, we get our prices from licensed and insured uh, contractors, we make sure we have two good contractors that are ready to go that can help us on that. And then we would want to put a time frame together or a time schedule with week by week activities all before we start this property. Next thing is as soon as we close on the property, we want to be in the property right away. We do not want a day to go by without us being inside that property and getting the work done. And we want people working like crazy. That's the other tip that I'm going to bring to you is what things can be done simultaneously. Like for example, can you have the plumber working while the electrical is being done? Yes, you could. So what things can be done simultaneously rather than having to be done linearly or one at a time? Those are some things your contractor can help you out with as well. Next thing is getting the contractor to get the re repairs done on time, on budget. There's multiple ways to do that from having an agreement to giving a budget to giving a discount. Of if they don't get it done on time, there's lots of different strategies around those, but any way you cut it, the contractor's got to get this done on time and get it done fast. So anything you can do. I find a lot of times people will be waiting for tile or carpet or something like that. And that's a stupid thing to be waiting for. If they don't have it in stock, get something else that's going to look just as good, but is in stock because the waiting game is going to cost you money with these holding costs or carrying costs as you go along. So think about this and think about what those carrying costs are going to be for you. Now, I've put together a video on the 10 commandments for managing a contractor during a rehab. You're going to want to check this video out. I talk about why bad contractors are the number one reason good deals fail. I talk about how to pick a general contractor and how to practically guarantee they don't go over budget or over your deadline. Check out this video. You're going to love it and make it a very profitable day.